you wanting to see the black woman at a point of submission. Is that where you want to see a black woman in the 1990s? Well, it depends on how you define submission. Those words uh, have a tendency to have a negative connotation for us because of how they were used against us during slavery and what we connect them true to. But actually, the kind of submission that I'm referring to just means cooperation and agreement. Uh, I don't think that anybody could say that I represent a woman who was subjugated in any kind of way. I don't think that anybody could say that my personality sounds like some man has me somewhere crawling around on the ground or walking ten paces behind him. So I'm not representing that. I'm representing strength. I'm saying that we have a lot of power. We have power to make heaven and hell for our men. And I'm saying let's try making heaven. Let's try to build him up. If a man has his woman behind him, he will believe he can do anything. And all we need to do is to get our men to believe that they can do anything. And he'll be able to, you know, do much better than he's doing now and come out of the pitiful condition he's in. As I said, I'm not exonerating him. I'm just saying that all of that strength that we have, let's use it in a more positive way instead of just going for self. You know, nobody told us that all of that being my own person and I'm independent would lead to separation and loneliness. But that's what we had to trade for that in order to have certain kinds of success. We had to give up the man because uh, we can't find a man who will compete with us on that level. Uh, as I said, we say he can't handle us or uh, he's intimidated by the fact I make more money than him. Uh, I think that by judging our men on how much money he makes, so we have lost a lot of good men. Because as black women, if we decide that all of us are going to just determine whether or not we're going to have a man based on how much money he makes, then well, none of us have no man. But you hear most black, women don't, black men don't have no money. There are many men <laughs> Not out. a lot of money. <laughs> there are many men out there who don't want a woman. That's absolutely true. Who is uh, not gainfully employed. That, that's Just true. Just looks both ways. And uh, one of the things that I have always explained about that, Raven, is that for my lectures, which you know I do all over the country so I can... Uh, give black people some ease and take some hysteria out of our communities that the book seems to have caused. Uh, I have security guards, not because of black women. We're going to do just what we do. We're going to fuss and we're going to cuss and do a little something, you know. But I have it because of black men. Because the black man's guy, to understand the black woman, puts the black man on point. And it reminds him what he has allowed to happen to his woman and his family. Many black men become intimidated. They don't want to take responsibility for their women. They don't want the challenge. They don't want to be put on point. So they become overwhelmed. And it's them that go off. That's why I have security. Because most men know that this book puts the black man on point. It just talks about what slavery has done to the black woman, but it's really telling him what he has allowed to happen. Let's go back to the book for just a moment. According to you, there are three types of black women. Yeah, they overlap you, a little bit. Can you yeah. define it just very briefly for us? Well, we have, a, I, I kind of number them, I think, as one, two, and three, and I would call them lower class, uh, middle level, and so-called upper class, you know, and uh, we certainly have to acknowledge that we have those levels in our society. We see them every day. That is not a put down to recognize that we have a lower class woman who perhaps lives on the street, who is an alcoholic, a bum, you know, who is outdoors, who is a, a, a subject to abject poverty as a lack of, uh, because of a lack of education and proper training and personal hygiene and other kinds of information. Uh, she exists and we need to reach her and try to raise her up differently because many of these women have children and we have to be responsible for them. Uh, we have uh, the mid-class mid women who are the number twos and uh, they're kind of average. They try to do better uh, than the lower level. And then, of course, we have the number three class, which is uh, the so-called successful, you know, black woman who is uh, tripping about the fact that she generally has a big job and a credit card or something, you know. Uh, we, Don't you we want do to see black of, women accomplish something? Yes, I absolutely do. But if we can't accomplish saving our race, then we have not made an accomplishment. We are looking at our man uh, become endangered. He's already endangered. Over 60% of us are single, widowed, separated, or divorced as of last year. And so we're not together. And uh, there is one monolith in the black community, Raven. If we don't reproduce children, then our nation, our race is going to die out here. And so we sometimes tend to look at black men and say, yeah, they're in this bad condition. And we act like they're going to die out and we're going to live on. But that's not the way it's going to go. Uh, if the black man dies, all of us are going to die because he actually is the backbone of our nation. Uh, we can't produce a baby by ourselves. And going into other nationalities still just erases you know, our, our nation, and I'm trying to get us uh, not to do that. Uh, 
you have problems with inter